now it's recording. <laughs> I, got, I do that a lot, you know, that's probably part of the ADHD thing, okay? But it's recording now. This is actually where the actually important stuff starts, so I'm glad that I caught myself of not starting the recorder, but it's recording. All right, so in the lab, you are going to use a tool called Logisim, and you'll be using that tool for the entire semester, okay? So you might want to bring a thumb drive with you so that you don't have to re-download the, the same thing over and over again. If you bring your own device, either a Mac or a PC as a laptop computer, you'll be fine. But if you're not bringing your own device and you're using the lab computer, you know, bring a, a flash drive. Doesn't have to be any fancy, okay? You know, four, four gigabytes is fine, okay? Because it's really small. It's a few hundred megabytes big, you know, so it's no big deal for most uh, flash, drive, flash drives. So I am going to start up Logisim. So Logisim, you know, looks like this. You know, the in user interface is kind of archaic. So I'm gonna show you guys how to use it. Uh, for this part, you can take notes. If you need more time, you know, you'll just let me know to, so I can kind of pause so that you have time to kind of jot down some notes if you want to. But for the most part, you know, it's not that hard to use. So the first thing I need to do is to get the power in the ground. This is power, and this is ground. Now this is not a circuit class. It is not an electrical engineering class, nor a uh, electric, uh, electronic technology class. But we are gonna get into enough of the discussion so that we can build a small circuit here. What is the power? Well, think of it as the source of one, okay? It will just spill out one all the time for eternity, okay? So anything that connects to power is gonna say one. Anything that connects to ground is gonna say zero. So ground is basically the endless source of zero, and then power is the endless source of one. Is that okay? Now, since we talk about zeros and ones, one is also up, okay? So when you flip a switch up, that's a one. When you flip a switch down, that's a zero. Is that okay? So because we have to kind of make the equivalency between you know, voltage, flipping a switch up versus down, and what is interpreted as one or true or zero, which is also false, okay? So the next thing I need to do, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to replicate the circuit that is, oops, okay, where is my browser that has the circuit? There we go. So I'm trying to replicate this circuit here. And in Logisim, so Logisim is here. So I go to transistor right here. And the way you put a transistor into the circuit is a click over here. You can think of this box as a factory. Okay, it can manufacture a bunch of stuff, and you just say, oh, give me a, a transistor. Then not dragging, just moving the mouse on the other side, which is your, wh what you're designing, and just a click. Now it places you know, a single transistor on this side. Is that okay? So quick twist. Is this a P-transistor, P-type transistor, or an N-type transistor? It's a P-type. There are many reasons why you know it's a P-type. One, it has a bubble. Two, it says so on the screen. <laughs> because any component that you have selected using this you know, tool here will have its properties listed here. So you can now see the type is a P-type. The orientation, which is the rotation of the device, is facing east. Uh, the gate location, is either the top or the left. This is the gate, by the way, which is actually where the switch is, okay? So the lever of the switch is the gate. And the number of data bits is one, you know, that one I'm gonna explain later, okay? You know, right now is, it is not relevant. Okay, so I want this to look like, you know, this diagram that I showed you earlier in the notes. So that means I want this arrow to be pointing down. The arrow direction is significant, okay? So for a P-type transistor, you want the flow from the source of one to something else. For an N-type transistor, you want the flow to go from zero to something else. 
So that's why for p-type transistor, the arrow is always going from the power to something else. For an n-type transistor, the flow or the direction is always going from ground to something else. So now I have to go like this and go like, uh, okay, I need to rotate it. So which way should I rotate it? This is facing east right now. I want it to point to south. Very good. So I just you know, make sure that it is pointing south like that. And I need two of those, right? So you can do the same thing over again, which is a lot, which is kind of time consuming. Or you can select what you want to duplicate and just type control D on the keyboard, which will du uh, duplicate whatever you have selected. You can actually multi-select. You can select multiple items and it will duplicate multiple items at the same time. So it's kind of handy when you're making a circuit that has a lot of uh, similar components. Okay, now I have the two uh, p-type transistors. I want to make my n-type now. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate again. And this time, oh, okay, I just made a mistake. Let me duplicate one more time. And this time I want to kind of place it over here. But I want this one to be an n-type. What do you think I should do in order to change the type of the transistor? Yep, go to the property window and change the p-type to n-type. <laughs> okay, not too hard. But it's not pointing in the right direction because remember what I said, an n-type transistor should always, the flow, the arrow, the, the way the arrow is pointing should always go from the source of zero to something else. Well, the source of zero is the ground so that means, you know, in order for this diagram to look like the diagram that I show in my notes here, I have to flip the direction. So to flip the direction, you have to change the orientation, which means rotation. And right now it's, it's, it's facing south. So how should I change it? Change it to north. Very good. All right. And I need one more of these things. So I can use control D. Well, kind of move this one around. And then control D, now I have the other one, like so. All right, so now I have all the components that I need. I need to make connections between the components. So when you're making connections between the components, so just move your mouse around and you will see that at certain points, it will, a circle will appear. So you only want to you know, make a connection where the circle appears when you hover your mouse over. Because you, if you try to make a connection to this point here and draw a line, oops, uh, it would actually do that. Okay, maybe not here. But you can kind of make a connection to any place that you want, but it's not a real connection. The actual connection points is where the circle is. So you always want to start with you know, some place where the circle is when you hover over and then make a connection to other places where the circle is. And this is drag and drop, by the way. So you're just dragging the line. It will automatically make turns you know, when it is appropriate. All right. So I'm just trying to replicate the design like that. Okay. Making all these connections. All right. So now I have four switches. So imagine that you have a gray wall that has four switches, right? There are two P switches you know, on the top and then two N switches at the bottom. And the wiring of the between the switches is exactly the way it is displayed here. So now the question is, so how do I flip these switches? Well, you need input pins to flip the switches. The input pins can be found here as well as here. I would use the pins from the toolbar because there are certain properties that are set up wrong or you know not applicable to us if you try to use it from here. So I would use the toolbar. So I put a pin, input pin over here and put another input pin. Eh, we'll just put it right here. So you can label all of these things. So when you select a uh, input pin, you can see that there's a label. The label is really just for display purposes. It doesn't really do anything functional. But for this purpose, you know, for this particular diagram, I do want to label the two input pins so I can refer to the values of the input pins later on when I try to explain the circuit and how it works. 
and now we, if you go back to the circuit that I need to draw, you can see that I need X to connect to this particular gate and also to connect to this particular gate here. The transistors can also be labeled. Well, they cannot be labeled, but you can use the text tool if you want to to label them. I'm not going to do that. So now I go like, okay, so let's do this from here to here and from here to here, okay? So that's the first one. And then for uh, Y as an input pin, it needs to connect to the other P transistor and also connect to the other N transistor like that. So now I can do that, okay. Like so, and you know, I'm going to kind of cross over things now. So now, oh, okay, that doesn't work because cross over um, one of the actual connection points of the transistor. So now I have this one here. Okay, so right now we can see, see that there are two types of quote unquote junctions, except one is not. This one is a real junction, okay? This one is like a, like a P junction, you know, in terms of road. So you have one road leading to a dead end and then to another road that goes on both directions. And there are, you know, so this, this is a real connection. On the other hand, this one here is a crossover. Think of that as, you know, you have a road going in this direction, north to south, and you have a highway overpass that's going from east to west. So that means the traffic on the road and the traffic on the highway overpass, they do not interfere with each other. Is that okay? So with a big solid dot, it means yes, they are all connected. Without a solid dot, they are not connected. Is that okay? Yes? So this is the teaching about like the transition B like the computers are yeah. basically. Well this is the lowest level transistor, even though you can talk about this one as this kind of transistor, but way beyond the scope of this class. But this class is not just about assembly language programming. It's also about computer architecture. And this is where I start. I'm building a computer from the ground up from the scratch. And then we program the first computer over here. Okay? So thank, thank you for that question because it, it kind of helps me to, it reminds me to talk about you know, the, the overall structure of this class. We start from the lowest level and then we build the computer from the ground up. All right. So now I am almost done, not entirely, because I need an output pin. This is an output pin. Input pins are squares, output pins are circles. So I pull an output pin, just kind of stash it over here, and then make a connection like this. And I can even label this one if I want to. Let me go ahead and label it as Z. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I have a circuit. I'm going to turn off simulation. So I can disable simulation and reset simulation. Because what I want to do is I want to analyze what happens when x is 1 and y is 1 and what happens when x is 0 and y is 1 and so on. So we want to run through a few of those scenarios so that we can figure out how do we know what z is going to be when x and y are zeros or ones. Okay. So I I'll let you guys choose. Okay. What scenario do you want me to go over first? What values do you want to specify as X and Y? Take your pick. One and one? Okay, we'll do one and one. All right, so I am going to use the poke tool to change X and Y both to ones just for documentation purposes. You can see the circuit itself is off. Um, so we don't really know what Z is gonna be because we have to analyze. Are we good so far? Okay. So now we analyze this circuit and try to figure out, okay, what's going to happen here? So one is flipping a switch up, okay? And the zero is flipping a switch down, position up. So now can someone tell me, um, is this switch on or off? It is a P transistor. So if you're reading your own notes, which I suggested taking a little bit earlier, how do I turn on a Flipping the switch up or down? Oh. I flip it down to turn it on. 
the things are switch, uh, switching it up, it means the switch is on or off. Switch is off, which means there's no connection, right? In other words, the way I'm configuring X, it is as if the transistor here is not even there. It is disconnected. The two ends are disconnected. Are we good so far? Um, the same can be said about you know the other P transistor because this P transistor, if you follow the trace of the wire, is also connected to a one, which is also meaning that we're flipping that switch up. But because it's a P type transistor, flipping the switch up means it is off. Are we good so far? So both P transistors are off. They are not connecting. What about the N transistors? Let's, fo let's focus on this one. This one connects to X, which is a one, which, me which means the, the switch position is up. But it's an N transistor. So can someone tell me whether it is connecting or not? It is connecting, very good. Well, just because one of these is connecting doesn't mean I have a path to ground because they are connected in series. So I have to look at this one too. So is this one on or off? In other words, is it connecting or not? It is also connecting. So we see that this one is connecting, this one is also connecting. So now what we do is we look at the output pin. The output pin is really just saying, okay, this is what I need to report back. It, it's consider this the return value of a function. That's basically what it is. X and Y are the parameters of a function. Z is the return value of a function. So we look at Z and go like, okay, are you connected to a one or a zero? That's basically the question that we are asking. So now we follow this wire here and we go to the first junction and ask, oh, do we have a path to one? Nope, this transistor is off. And then we follow that to here. And now we have two ways to proceed. I'm gonna go this route first. And then we ask, oh, do we have a path to one? Nope, because this transistor is also off. Then we go back to this junction and go like, do we have a path down here? Yes, because that N transistor is on, it is connecting. And now I can go even further and ask, is this one also on? The answer is yes, it is also on, it is connecting. So that means I now have a path from Z all the way down to ground, which means the source of all zeros is now connecting to the output pin. So what do you think the output pin is? What is the value of the output pin? It's a zero, classic, okay? So using a similar method, I can now analyze for the other four, other three cases because X can only be a zero or one, Y can only be a zero or one. So that means I have four cases you know, in order to figure out you know, what the value of Z is supposed to be for the four cases. So right now I'm gonna go back to, well, I'm gonna use a text editor for this purpose. So let me go to Mouse Pad. Okay. Oh, there we go, there, there we go. So now we want to work, work out a truth table, x, y, and then z, z is the output. Um, x can be a zero, and when x is a zero, y can be a zero. Um, we'll work on this a little bit later. Uh, can be a zero, one, can be a one, zero, can be a one and one. This one we just worked out. You know, the output is a zero because that's just what we worked out. So we'll work out one more, okay? Yeah, and then we'll, the rest are fairly easy. So we'll work out you know, what happens when x is one and y is a zero. So let me go back to the switch here. Um, I said x is a one, y is a zero. So we flip that to a zero. There we go. So now we go through the same type of analysis. But most of you would probably recognize right away, it's like, oh, one of the two N transistors is gonna be off, right? You don't even have to go through a full analysis because um, both one connects to X, the other one connects to Y. And in order for an N type transistor to be on, to be connecting, the flip has to be up, right? So that means this one is connecting, but this one is not. But because these two are connected in series, if at least one is off, the whole thing is not connecting. Okay, so that means your Z is not a zero. 
Well, let's go the op opposite way. Is at least one of these two transistor on? The answer is yes, okay? Because both of these are p-type transistors, and in order for p-type transistor to turn on to make the connection, the flip has to be down, a Z. But we know at least one of them has to be down, right? Because you know, the input X and Y, one connects to one p-type transistor, the other one goes to the other p-type transistor. If the input pins are one and zero, that means at least one of the two p-type transistors is on and making a connection. So in this case, um, it is this one that is off, this one that is on. So from the perspective of the output pin, you go backwards and go like, oh wait, you know, there's a path here. I just found a path to a one. But you should also make sure that the other paths are not connecting, particularly this one is not connecting to zero. So in this case, Z is a one, that's right. So now we go back here and say, oh, okay, that's a one. And this is a symmetric scenario. This is also going to be a one. This one is also going to be a one because this means you're both of the end transistors are both off. Okay, one being off, both being off, same thing. No connection to the Z. But at the same time, both P transistors are on. I only need one path to connect to a one to for the output to be a one. Having two paths to a one is still just going to give me a one. So now you look at this truth table, and then you ask, hmm, does it resemble anything that you're used to? So before we answer that question, I'm going to take row. The way I take row in this class most of the time is to get you guys a row-taking activity. So let me go back to here. So this is our row-taking activity. Um, I just enabled it. So, you sh so sign in to Canvas. You know, on your mobile device or on the computer that's in front of you, I'll give you guys a little bit of time to do that. So then go to the Canvas shell for this class. You should be able to see 20240827 row taking. It's locked. It's locked? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, locked in the sense that you need a passcode. It says it was locked at 945. Oh, okay. I specified the wrong time then. 9.45, oh, okay. That's my bad, set up the wrong time. All right, so let me go change that, give you guys a little bit more time. All right, so we'll change that to 10. I really hate Canvas because it needs the AM versus the PM and it doesn't understand today either. There, there are a lot of things that we need to buy now. I can make it work, but it doesn't mean I like it. All right, so do a refresh and see if it works. Yeah, there we go. Yep, so the access code is PN both in lowercase. I'm gonna write it on the whiteboard. So PN is the uh, access code. And once you get past the access code, it just asks you, are you in class today? I always have a few smart people saying, what if I say no? <laughs> <coughs> All right, so, yep. If it can, uh, from yesterday to failure, some people got you know, done in half an hour, uh, some people spent the entire time to get it done. The one P, one off, you know, I can give you some extra time. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that after the lecture. Okay. Any problem from anyone, you know, taking row at this point? Nope. Okay. So with, with that done, I'm going to continue with the demonstration because you are going to do about the same thing in your lab. So that means you know, everything that, that I do here relates to your lab. Yes.
a B ahead by a lot. Okay, so follow the rank in your order in a matrix, because that's typically the order that I think you would want to be. All right, so um, we got about 15 minutes left, which is, I think we, we are doing a good time here. Um, all right, so what is this truth table? Does it remind you of any type of Boolean expression that you have learned in CISP 360? You go like, well, it reminds me of two operators, but it's neither of those. Because from the perspective of three of the output is one and one is a zero, you think, oh, that looks like a or, right? But it's not. From the perspective of, um, you know, when whenever there's a zero, the output is the same, only when both are ones, you know, the output is the opposite, it reminds you of and, but it's not that either. So this is actually what we call NAND. So Z is actually the same thing as the negation of X and Y. And that's why it's also called NAND, N-A-N-D. The first N of NAND is negated. It is a negated AND state. Is that okay? Well, you guys probably should say no, because tech, you just made a claim that Z is the negation of X and Y. You can be lying. How can I be sure? How do you answer that question? <laughs> work out the truth table, okay? Simply work out the truth table, okay? So what you do, this is a suggested activity after class. Okay, remember those two extra hours for every hour of lecture? This is one of those things you can do. Change this to that. And then what you do is get rid of these, okay? You know, so don't get yourself you know, some hints of what it's supposed to be. Get rid of these and work them out by yourself, manually, by hand. That would be a suggested activity because it will give you a few things. One, it, it, it will give you a chance to work with a truth table. Truth tables are really useful, not only in this class, but also in 440. It is it's a very useful technique. Two, it will help you convince that, oh, the output of that circuit that we just built is really just doing the negation of an AND, okay? And three, we're gonna use that same technique later on to show a few things. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the notes just a little bit and then we'll move on to talk about the, um, the, uh, the circuit. So now we move on to this and I claim that this is all we need. You go like, wait, in CISP 360, we do not use NAND as an operator. That is not by itself an operator. But I'm going to claim that with NAND, you can use it to make a NOT. You can use it to make an AND. You can also use it to make an OR. In fact, you know, in the notes, I tell you exactly how you do it. If you want the negation, this is the mathematical symbol of negation. It is just X NAND X. If you want to make an AND, X and Y, this is the uh, uh, mathematical symbol of, of conjunction or AND, it is X NAND Y NAND X NAND Y. If you want to make an OR, it's a little bit more complicated. X or Y is X NAND X NAND Y NAND Y. I just made a bunch of claims. Every time I make a claim, I tell my students, Pretend that I'm lying to you. Pretend that I'm trying to trick you. How do you make sure that I am not lying to you? How, how do you make sure that I'm not telling you something that is bogus? And the question is, do you have enough tools up to this point of this class, the very first class, to verify by yourself that this equivalent, this equality does hold? What do you think? truth table. Make your own truth table. 
so that you make a truth table for regular or, which should not be a big problem because you know, that's an operator from CISP 360, make another truth table for this rather complicated expression and make sure that the truth tables, the two truth tables, give you exactly the same value on every single row. Okay, so that's an exercise, okay? It might take you 15 minutes, 20 minutes to do, but it's worth the time because it's a very useful technique in um, Boolean algebra, and Boolean algebra by itself is also very useful in coding, programming, and all kinds of computer science stuff. All right, so I'm going to stop here in terms of the notes. Your reading assignment, okay, let me go back to here. The reading assignment is implied. I'm not gonna remind you guys to do uh, reading, it's basically just continue with all the modules or all the um, reading material. So we are currently you know, using this reading material. The next one down is actually further down. There's, there's a lot of stuff that you can read, but what really matters is this one here. So this is your reading you know, assignment, is to read and kind of try to understand the material in this one, you know, which is about base conversion. But I do have more demonstration to do before I let you guys do your lab. Because in your lab, let me go back to Logisim. Where's my Logisim? There you go. So in your circuit, I don't want it to look like this because I want to be able to test your circuit in a particular way. So the way I want to do this is it only supposed to have one input pin and one output pin and they're all gonna be eight bit wide. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna take this out. So instead of having two input pins, I'm going to make an input pin that has multiple bits in it. So this is a single input pin. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. Is instead of having one data bit, it has eight data bits. What that means is this one single input pin allows you to specify eight independent zeros and ones. Now one, each zero and one is called a bit, which, is, which stands for a binary digit. So now we have eight binary digit, and we have one single wire coming out of the input pin. So that means this wire is also special because it is a wire, it is basically a bundle of smaller conductors, okay? I'm not sure whether you guys have uh, looked at a RJ45 cable or connector. It's one wire, but inside the, okay, it's one cable, but inside the cable there are multiple wires. It's the same idea here. You have one cable, which you can also see the color is uh, black instead of your blue, because you know, it, is, it contains multiple wires inside the cable. I only need two of the wires in the cable, so what I need is a splitter, okay? So this is also a very important you know, discussion because you know, these are the things that you'll be using, not only for this lab, but also for you know, some additional labs in the future. So I need to move, okay, why is it not working? Okay, select, okay. Uh, I need to move the whole thing to, there we go. All right, so now you need a splitter. So I'm gonna just kinda splash a splitter here. I wanna talk about the multiple, the, the properties of a splitter. Facing, okay, no big deal, okay, we know facing is just rotation. So facing east is correct. It is about the split end, okay? You know, the split end is where the facing is. Fan out of two, that's okay. I only need two uh, split end, you know, for this splitter. Bit width is talking about the merged end. I need that to be eight because this number has to match whatever this thing has, which is eight bits. So now I connect it here and it connects. Okay, if the parameters are specified wrong, it will give you an orange you know, color and tell you that it doesn't mismatch. So I want to hook this up to here because I want one of, I want bit zero to connect to here. And by the way, this is bit zero and this is bit one. And I want the other one to connect here. Now you can see that you know, I have some mismatch because you know, that's in orange. Well, that's because this particular split end actually has four bits in it. It has bit zero to three. This particular split end has bit four to seven. I don't need all those. So what I need to do now is to go to the splitter 
This part of the splitter allows you independent control of which wire of the cable goes to which split end of the splitter. Are we doing okay so far with that? All right. So with this particular configuration, I only need bit zero to go to the top. I only need bit one to go to the bottom. Everybody else don't even get to appear anywhere on the split end. So you can specify none for everybody else, and now everything is good again. Do we have any questions about this part? Yeah. If you also need bit two, then you have three bit one. Right. But in this case, you only need two bit one. The output is going to be the same, okay? So I'm going to pick up an output pin here. But I'm going to make it an 8-bit output pin. So if you directly connect these two, it's not going to work, right? Because this is a single bit coming out of the transistors, but this one wants 8-bit. So this is not going to work. So I can do control Z and undo that. So what I need to do is another splitter, okay? So this one I have, I'm just gonna make another splitter here. This time I only need one single bit to go to eight bits, even though the, sev the other seven bits are not used. So this time I need the splitter to also have a bit width of eight because the bit width of the splitter refers to the merged end of the splitter. Is that okay? Um, a splitter has two ends, the merged end and the split end. The merged end is what is dictating the bit width. It has to be eight because this is gonna be the, the uh, merged end. The split end, you, it only needs a fan out of, guess what, one. Oh, that's the wrong. <laughs> okay, fan out is one. So now, you know, by default, you know, LogiSim wants to be smart and go like, okay, let me figure out, you know, how to use all the wires to the split end. I don't need all of these, okay? So you just specify everything else to be none. So this way, only bit zero is exposed to the split end. The other seven bits are simply not connected. Are we good so far? So now we are almost ready, except we have to flip the direction. Because the split end is over here, it is supposed to go here. The merged end is here, it's supposed to go here. Now, if you don't mind your diagram to look really ugly, it's okay not to rotate it. I'll show you. You guys will go like, ooh, that is ugly. Yes, it is very ugly. Unnecessarily ugly, but it works. Yep, it works. It's just not very good looking, okay? So now I can actually make the circuit work, okay? Perfect timing, we got about two more minutes or one minute or so. So now I go back to simulate, we enable it. So now I can say, oh, if both inputs are zeros, referring to bit zero and bit one, if both are zeros, the output is a one. If I make both uh, ones, okay, you have to use the poking tool to change the value. So I want to change this to a one, change this to a one. The output is now a zero. So the zero is right here. You can also see that when a wire only has one single bit, the color of the wire reflects the value of the wire. Bright green is a one, dark green is a zero. But when a wire has multiple bits or multiple, when a cable has multiple wires inside, then it's always black because we cannot just say, oh, it's a one or zero because we got multiple bits inside the cable. So this really concludes the demonstration because it really shows you everything that you need to do um, to make this work. There's only one little part left, but the instruction is in the instruction itself, so I'm not gonna talk about it. I do want to emphasize that there are two activities or two things that you need to do. Um, let me scroll back up to here. 
So this one is the instruction. You'll follow the instructions. And there's a video embedded into the instructions of one of these. Watch that. Okay. You, well, okay. You don't have to because I just demonstrated that today. But you feel, you feel free. You can feel free to watch that. So this is a quiz. But by the end of the quiz, you would have produced a circuit, which is the one that I just created. You have to turn that one in using this activity. One more thing. When you click on this one, it's a little bit long because I'm also giving you the tool to make sure that your circuit works the way it's supposed to. If you're running out of time, turn in the file first, okay, before you check it. But on the other hand, if you have time <coughs> and you want to exercise and you know, kind of know how to make this work, then you can follow these instructions to kind of double check whether your circuit is working or not. So it's a long, it's rather long you know, in terms of instruction be because I'm giving you the instruction of what I do to grade your submission. So this way, you're using the very same tool that I use to evaluate your solution. If it works like this, in your case, you're gonna get full credit for that for your submission. So I just wanna give you guys the tool also to make sure that your submission is gonna be exactly the way I want it. Are we good? Are there any questions? No questions, okay. So if there are no questions, I'm gonna go back to the lab. It's, I think it's open already, but you need a pa access code to the first one. Mm -hmm. The access code is just logic sim all lowercase. So that's the access code to the lab itself. I'm gonna write it here. So it's just logic sim all lowercase. So that would get you into the quiz. The submission one does not have an access code because you, know, you won't be able to get there until you're done with all of this stuff anyway. So both of these are due at 11.50, which is the official end time of the lab. But in between, if you guys want to take a short break, be my guest. If you want to need to go to the bathroom, go get some snack, be my guest. Now, since I do have a little bit more time left, how many people know about MESA, M-E-S-A? Okay, so MESA is a resource. They have tutoring you know, that is free, available to our students. If you want to be, uh, there's an eligibility to join MESA. You have to be first generation and um, receive financial aid. So both of those are requirements to become a MESA member. But once you're a MESA member, you can use all of its services including free tutoring in the center. If you only meet one of those, meet one of the two criteria, you can still join, but as a uh, MESA spelled back backwards. So MESA is M-E-S-A. So when you spell it backward, it's ASAM. So instead of a MESA member, you can be an ASAM member, which means you meet one of the two requirements. I think you can still get tutoring, you just don't get all of the benefits of being a MESA member. It is a tremendous resource, okay? So if you qualify as a MESA member, I highly encourage you to go downstairs to the first floor and go to the MESA center, check in with the center director and say, I want to know what I can get out of this you know, MESA center and they will talk about you know, what kind of um, what kind of you know, resource is available to its member. It's right next to the STEM center, by the way, or the STEM home base. So that's a really good resource for those of you who want to get some additional tutoring resource. All right. So are there any questions I need to address before I turn off the recorder? Because I'm still recording right now. None, okay, I'm gonna turn off the recorder.